And we are back, my friends. But nothing can stop us. Nothing can stop us in living and celebrating our faith. And so welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Catholic Church. And welcome to our Mass for today. Today we celebrate the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And so to begin our celebration, why don't we sing a little bit? We sing, Gather Your People, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord. Join me. Gather your people, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, as we are gathered by the Lord today to celebrate this Eucharist and to live our faith, we take the time to call to mind our sins and failures, and we ask the Lord to grant us pardon and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Together, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency. And with much lenience you govern us for power whenever you will attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn toward me and have pity on me. Give your strength.
to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the, the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First, collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. Dear friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, my dear friends. I don't know if you already have heard of the story of Wilma Rudolph. She was the 20th of 22 children. She was born prematurely, and her survival was doubtful. When she was four years old, she contracted double, double pneumonia and scarlet fever, and that left her with a paralyzed left leg. At age nine, she removed the metal brace she had been dependent on and began to walk without it. By 13, she had developed a rhythmic walk, which doctors said was a miracle. That same year, she decided to become a runner. She entered a race, but came last. For the next few years, every race she entered, she came in last. Everyone told her to quit, but she kept on running. One day, she actually won a race, and then another. And from then on, she won every race she entered. Finally, this little girl, who was told she would not walk again, went on to win three Olympic gold medals. This little girl, whom we can imagine went through hell, but patiently went through it, won the Olympics, won life, and won big time. Friends, I started with this because... Our gospel today speaks of the good and the bad coexisting. A man sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the field and then fled. So when the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. His servant suggested that they pull the weeds out. But he said, no, let them grow together until harvest. And then we will separate the weeds from the wheat. The weeds we will burn, but the wheat will be placed in my barn. Well, common interpretation of this parable tells us that the wheat represents good people, those who are righteous, 
those who strive to follow the will of the Lord. And the weed, uh, the weed stands for the unrepentant sinners, those who refuse to listen and to obey, those who are selfish, and those who try a, to make a mess out of other people's lives. And how often, like the servant, we immediately want to get rid of the weeds. We want to pull it out immediately. But this parable can also be seen as good men and women coexisting with some forms of evil in the world. Like Wilma Rudolph, who was born with pneumonia and scarlet fever and paralyzed leg. Like Franklin Roosevelt, who was struck with polio and left him with paralyzed leg. Or like Nick Vujicic, who was born without limbs and was not expected to survive. And yet, through faith and a ton of patience, they won over these evils and they came out victorious like a wheat placed in the barn. Was it easy? I bet not. Did it happen quickly? Definitely not. But they waited, they waited, and they patiently waited. Our experience of this pandemic is not far from this. We were all, quote-unquote, asleep, and this enemy came to us. It horribly affected our usual way of life, and admittedly, we wish the virus went away quickly. But it didn't until now. Until now, it's still around us, and we are becoming impatient, and we're getting tired from this, and we want to pull this weed out. But seemingly, the Lord, our Master, is telling us, not yet. We will wait. There is an appointed time for it. Mind you, in this time of waiting, there shall be a lot of temptations. We shall be tempted to think that the Lord has abandoned us or the Lord is not a good master. Doubts will come in and we will seek for another quote-unquote master or we will follow not his will but our own will. Yet the challenge is, will we remain in faith? Will we patiently endure this until the appointed time. Personally, the best thing that I'm seeing in our church is that we are not letting this evil win. Yes, it did affect our normal way of worship, but we found new ways of being church. We ventured into ways we never explored. We went online and we strengthened the domestic church. When we reopened last month with limitations, we put together safety procedures and we offered both online and in-person masses as well as other sacraments and services. And now we were told we, can, we cannot do it inside, then we will do it outside. We will do distribution of communion outside tomorrow for this weekend. And next weekend, we will do more. We will do both outdoor in-person masses as well as distribution of communion. The point is, we will not let this virus stop us. We will not let this virus put us down. We will win and we will come out victorious. But the question remains, will we remain in faith as we coexist with this evil virus? Will we patiently endure this until the appointed time comes? In her book, My Grandfather's Blessings, Stories of Strength, Refuge, and Belonging, physician Rachel Naomi Remen tells of the many unusual gifts she received from her beloved grandfather, an Orthodox rabbi and scholar. She said once when she was four, her grandfather brought her a paper cup. She expected to find something special in it, but it was full of dirt and she was not allowed to play dirt. Disappointed, she told her grandfather that she wasn't allowed to play with dirt. Her grandfather smiled. He took her little teapot from her doll's tea set and took little Rachel to the kitchen where it filled with water. 
he put the little cup on a windowsill in her room and handed her the teapot. If you promise to put some water in this cup every day, something may happen, he told her. This made little sense to a four-year-old, but little Ch Rachel promised every day. He repeated every day. At first, Rachel did not mind pouring water into the cup, but as the days went on and nothing happened, it became harder and harder to remember to do it. After a week, she asked her grandfather if it was time to stop it. Grandfather shook his head. Every day, he repeated. The second week, it became even harder, but grandfather told, held her to her promise every day. Sometimes, she would only remember about the water after she went to bed and would have to get up in the middle of the night and water it in the dark. But in the end, Rachel did not miss a single day of watering. Then one morning, three weeks later, there were two little green leaves that had, been, that had not been there the night before. Rachel was completely astonished. She could not wait to tell her grandfather, certain that he would be surprised as she was. But of course, he wasn't. Carefully, he explained to his beloved granddaughter that life is everywhere, hidden in the most ordinary and unlikely places. Rachel was delighted. And all it needs is water, Grandpa? Gently, Grandpa touched her on the top of her head. No, dear Rachel. All it needs is your faithfulness. All it needs is your faithfulness. Friends, despite the weeds in our midst, life is still here. Maybe hidden, maybe not so obvious, but life is still here. But all it needs is our faithfulness. Amen. And now we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord calls us to be people of faith and love. With confidence, let us now offer our prayers for the needs of the church and our world that we, the church, may continue to reveal the mercy, compassion, and love of God for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all leaders of uh, peoples and nations, that they may work for peace, justice, and unity among all peoples, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who look forward to receiving the fullness of new life in Christ may feel the strength and support of our prayers, as we pray for God's blessing upon their continuing journey, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel isolated or alone, anxious or afraid, that they may be blessed by God this day and in the days ahead, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Colleen Field Weiss and Ernest Gallegos Jr., that God may grant them eternal peace in his kingdom, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And now, my friends, in the silence of our hearts, we offer to the Lord all our prayers and petitions. We pray for those who have asked us that we pray for them and for their intentions. We pray for our loved ones, families, and friends, those who live with us and those who are far away from us. And we pray for our St. Paul community. O oh God, you, the giver of every good gift, human and divine, in your mercy hear the prayers we offer in faith this day and grant us your grace and blessing every day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, throughout this pandemic, we have seen your generosity and your constant support of the parish. From the bottom of our hearts, we thank you. Please continue supporting our parish, as you know, as we are adjusting to the many uh, different norms uh, each day. We are we we continue to operate as a parish, and in fact, we are uh, putting in more expenses uh, than before. So please continue sending in your donations, whether uh, dropping them off in the parish office, whether giving it, giving through online, uh, online giving, or tomorrow if you come here for the distribution of communion, there will also be a uh, collection box where you can put in your donation. Thank you very much and may God bless you abundantly. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart may be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. And so pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this guest we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gerald, our Bishop, Alberto, our Coadjutor our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now at a Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, my dear friends, Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
The Lord, the gracious, the merciful, has made a memorial of his wonders. He gives food to those who fear him. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And for some important announcements, especially regarding this week, children's liturgy will follow immediately after this Mass. Sister Sarah will bring you um, some exciting uh, Bible lessons and um, um, practices, songs for kids, so please stay tuned. Uh, with the closing of churches and parish facilities this week, we unfortunately had to postpone the reopening of the Eucharistic Prayer Chapel. Let us continue to pray that we may soon return to a place where we can once again gather in our churches and offer sacred spaces for individual prayer and reflection. Second, the closing of the churches and parish facilities this past week was yet another challenge to our life of faith. However, we know that our faith is strong and we participate as fully as possible in that faith in spite of any and all challenges. Tomorrow, Sunday, following our live stream Mass at 9 a.m., we will offer the Eucharist or we will distribute communion here at the parish grounds from 10 o'clock in the morning up to 12 o'clock noontime. In order to receive communion, you must have already received your first communion. You must have fully participated and completely in, the live stream, in this live stream Mass. Uh, be in a state of grace. Meet the Eucharistic fast requirements. Uh, no uh, food or beverages except water for one hour before you receive the Eucharist. This is how you shall enter the parish grounds. All cars must enter through Gate 1 on Boys Republic Drive. You will not be parking, but simply entering into the vehicle line for communion. Please follow the directions of the guidance ministers as they direct you to the communion distribution point. Once you arrive at the communion distribution point, you will be met by a communion guidance minister who will direct you at that time. Please be aware that there is no upper age limit. If you are physically healthy and you meet all of the above requirements, you are welcome to receive communion tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Please uh, take note that the directive of the bishop is still in effect with regard to distribution of the Eucharist by the hand. And you may not bring the Eucharist uh, or communion to anyone at home. Anyone who will be receiving the Eucharist who meets the guidelines above must be physically present to receive communion. Since the church itself is currently closed, there will be an opportunity for you to offer your weekly donation if you are not already participating in our online giving program. We are thankful for your ongoing support of the parish, especially in this time of great need. Finally, please bring hand sanitizer with you and make sure that everyone in the vehicle is wearing masks. With all that being said, please bring with you a good amount of patience and a prayerful spirit. As this is a brand new procedure for our parish, we are not sure just as how many will arrive and how many cars will need to be directed throughout this uh, communion period. So please, uh, as I have said, please bring with you a ton of patience and a heart full of faith. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. I hope to see you tomorrow. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless and keep you and your loved ones in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has been offered. Now go and continue to be faithful to the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, why don't we sing, This is the Day? 
This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. So this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice, my friends, and see you again tomorrow.